Welcome back, Ishes. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. So today we're going to talk about Silver Surfer Black from Donny Cates, Trad Moore, and Dave Stewart on colors. Donny Cates is Marvel's new golden boy. He's yeah. like the architect of literally everything at Marvel. He is not afraid to tell cosmic stories about gods and stuff. And that's that's not, why he's on Thor now. That's why he's on Thor. I mean, like also because the man loves money. And there's no reason not to say yes to like 26 books. Uh, but he's already made major milestones at Marvel by inventing characters like Null, the god of the symbiotes, and Cosmic Ghost Rider, yeah. and, and so on and so forth. And this forth. isn't the first Johnny Cates book on this couch. No, it is not. You did God Country. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also did the death of the Inhumans. He killed the Inhumans as yep. well. Yeah. Dude doesn't say no. Unless the Inhumans are asking if they can live. Uh, so this is, I, I, by the way, this is like a crazy oversized I version. Know. This is like the only one I could get. And I was also really glad to have gotten it. I figure it kind of works. It does. Like so what you just described. So it is epic and grand and big. And I think it's just like everybody recognized that Tradmore was doing something big and special. And this is Donny Cates' love letter. And you think, like, when you see the art, you're going to think, like, oh, it's a love letter to Jack Kirby. And indeed it kind of is. And I think that's Trad Moore's homage. But for Donny Cates, this is a love letter to Stan Lee. Aww. Because Stan Lee has said, or had said, that Silver Surfer is one of his favorite characters. And, of course, like, he invented half the friggin' Marvel Universe. Two-thirds more than the Marvel Universe. So, yeah. I mean, like, all of them are his favorite characters. But... They're uh, all his children. Yes, they're all his children. Yeah, and how can you pick just one? Right, uh, but Stan loved... Like this one's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow, Dad. <laughs> and I don't blame Stan Lee for picking Silver Surfer. All the other stories, Fantastic Four, uh, Spider-Man, like all those books were about people doing regular people stuff with the superhero backdrop, mm -hmm. right? Peter Parker, nebbish 15-year-old, you know, Fantastic Four, just a normal family that has to do extraordinary things. With Silver Surfer, that's when he really got to wax poetic. That was when he really got to play with language and just tell Jack Kirby to go balls to the wall nuts with the art. You know, just just draw whatever, mm -hmm. and I'll fill it in with my ridiculous oration. And indeed, he did. And it was like it was downright almost poetic, right? Like kind of pretty and beautiful. And uh, there's a there's a Silver Surfer collection from uh, the artist Mobius. And in that, Stan gets to really sink his teeth into, into, into language. And, uh, and Kate's wanted to kind of like do Stan proud by doing like a Silver Surfer book. Aww. And uh, so don't judge him too harshly when this is basically sprung out of Kate's run on the Guardians of the Galaxy, which is another book he couldn't say no to, in which Thanos died and they're doing a reading of his will and the Guardians of the Galaxy, among other people, are invited. I'm imagining like Thanos having to go to an attorney's office, Being a space like, attorney's office, like waiting in the waiting room. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. Yeah, I need my will written up and notarized. And like every time like, like Gamora really pisses him off, he's like, okay, I gotta go back and I yeah, gotta she's change out. some things. You can't, get, <laughs> you can't leave everything to death you can't take it with you. Damn it. So anyway. that, that's an entity. That's a, it's, it's not really anything. You can't... You could donate it. Would but you I, like to donate but, it? But I met her. Why can't I give it to her? Yeah. Are Plus, we, like, I'm in love with her. Oh, is she your spouse? <sighs> no. I, I, that's complicated. <laughs> Listen, there, this isn't a Facebook page. It's your will. Damn it. <laughs> so, uh, they're doing the reading of the will. The Black Order shows up, and they're like... We're gonna tear shit up, and they indeed do by dropping like a black hole on everybody, and they all get sucked in. Among them, Beta Ray Bill and Cosmic <gasps> Ghost Rider. Is it a Rider. singularity? It is more or less a singularity, but the Silver Surfer is also sucked in there. Oh. And you're like, what happened? This book will answer that question about what happened. That's what happened. That's what happened. So let's go forward. Let's go forward. So oh. what happens is uh, we kind of like set up who the Silver Surfer is, that he is this you know, Herald of Galactus. His job, of course, was to seek out new worlds and new civilizations. And, and boldly then, go where no one has gone before. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then bring Galactus and have him eat them. It's, it's, that kind of goes against the Prime Directive. Like, no, that is his Prime Directive. <laughs> he's, like, he's like a really weird intergalactic sommelier. Mm, you yeah. want to go to this planet, they've got a very nice mouthfeel. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but now he's sucked in this black hole and uh, they're barely 
keeping it together. They're going to be thrown through time and space and whatnot. Oh, hey, Cosmic Ghost Rider's there. I'm telling you, he's awesome. Tumbling through this wormhole and ending up like at the end of nothingness or whatever. Mm -hmm. So Silver Surfer grabs the band's or the chains, I should say. They're actually chains now, Ciderac. But he grabs the chains okay. from, this from, actually makes a lot more from Cosmic Ghost Rider, and he whips them around Stormbreaker, which is, of course, Beta Ray Bill's equivalent of Mjolnir. And then everybody just kind of like piles onto Cosmic Ghost Rider, and then... He heralds them to safety? He, he basically snaps them out of it, and he himself is still trapped in it. He, get, he, he falls through eternity. Oh. Uh, so the rest of his merry band of guardians are launched out of the singularity and and presumably to freedom. He doesn't know what time or location they're gonna be dropped out on, but it beats tumbling endlessly for all eternity or being ripped apart. So he's happy with that. And so- I don't know if you like skydiving, tumbling for all eternity might not be that bad. That's fair. So uh, he frees his friends and then he himself just, just surrenders to the darkness and tumbles for, for decades. I've had worse. <laughs> <laughs> Until uh, ultimately, he finds something out there. Something like the light is extinguished, there's nothing left, but he sees that there's something out there that is killing. Like everything. It's killing the light. Oh, and that's. So he boards his board. He, he, I he, thought he was just drifting towards his board, being like, oh, there's one thing out there, and thank God I'm heading towards it. Yeah, <laughs> no, he has the board. Like, well, he can conjure the board, like the board can come out of him. Or he is he the can, board. He is the board. The board and he are one. Tradbor's art is like not only like obviously Kirby esque in the yes. way like they're depicting the colors especially, mm -hmm. but like his anatomy, especially like when he goes crazy like that. Yeah. And like on the back yes. has like a weird like Egon Schlielian like thing about it, like oh. quality about it. I'm Does sorry. Ian, what? Egon Schliel is like uh, I think he's German. Like he was an, right. he was an artist, and like I'm not recommending go and look it up because it is like you know it is it is mature art. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. But the way in which he painted bodies was like very loose and like captured not only like the beautiful sense of it and like the fluidity of it, but also like the ugly parts of it. And that like, you know what I mean? Like it, it, like if someone's like hip was like jutting out ever, like he like over accentuated that at times. And okay. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. That's very much in keeping with this art. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying that's where he's getting his inspiration from, but I was like, be. oh, that's kind of cool. Like it has that kind of quality to it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love the art in this. It's very it's very loose, as you describe. It's very loose. Yeah. Uh, but not fast and loose. No. no. Well, it's pretty well, fast. It's I mean, he's going, like, when he when he goes towards that light source, mm -hmm. he, he he notes that it will take a normal traveler aeons to get there, mm -hmm. but he is not such a traveler. And then <laughs> He's the traveler. It. Yeah. He um, jumps on the board, and he, gets, and he heads there. And he ends up on this, like, on this cold, gross, smelly planet. We just had like an Egon and a Traveler reference. We are very Ghostbusters here. Yeah, right now. right. But he lands on this this, this cold, decaying planet uh -huh. that chills oh, him to the bowl. Was here. <laughs> uh, well, it depends on, well, he's, he's fallen through time. So Silver Surfer is not in the present now. He is in the past. Long past, distant past, ancient past, you might say. That Your does past. explain. Yeah. <laughs> that does explain the weird costumes on these guys. Well, these guys. Well, he he asks them because he he lands and he finds this like odd temple and these three faceless creatures. They look like guardians, if you will, not guardians of the universe like in DC, but like guardians of some kind of like unseen eldritch horror. They look they like are. they're going to like. A weird like a version of Wicked. A, yeah, the, well, they, look, they look like regal, you know, guards or. Uh, no, that one looks like the Wicked Witch. Yes. Well, they're they're supposed to. Oh well, yeah, look at that hat, and a jester, and then something else. Yeah, like a knight. Yeah. He appeals to them, and he's like, "I don't mean you any harm. Do you have a master?" And they speak this like ancient language that Silver Surfer remarks he may have heard before, and he kind of gets the gist of it. Okay. And their answer is, our master is God. And he says, okay, well then please tell God that I need a hand. And then they hit him with a big hammer and then attack him. Oh. And he's like, okie dokie. Okay, I got the power <laughs> cosmic though, yeah. so. See, exactly. I feel like you run into this, this is not a God you want to talk to. Not especially. Like if this is what their like emissaries act like, it's mm -hmm. like. It, no, it, Tiffany, it's like the angrier the bees, the sweeter the honey. What? <laughs> That's a thing. Don't look it up. Kate's really infused this book with a lot of like similar Stanley esque like poetic language. Mm -hmm. You know, he says things like, I am unfurled, I am a razor on the wind. My board is cleaved in twain and they think me defeated. You know, that kind of thing. And right. It, that's the kind of shit, if you're ever going to get it in a Marvel comic, it has to be in a Silver Surfer book. And in fact, 
in the old Silver Surfer cartoon show from like 98, it's chock full of that stuff. But it's very Stanley and it's very, you know, self-indulgent. But like, if you don't read that kind of thing all the time, I, 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 I advise it because it's kind of fun to get Question. into Question. Yeah. Is that why Stanley seemed to have such an affinity for Doom? Yes, because Doom loved to wax poetic and yeah. speak in a third person, and he was very regal himself. And yeah, I can, I'm sure that was why <laughs> Lee loved Doom. I thought you were talking rip and tear Doom. Yeah, why Stanley was just like, yeah. I love Doom. <laughs> IDDQD, I'm going to tear through this thing. Suck no. it, Cyberdemon. <laughs> <laughs> I got the plasma <laughs> rifle now. Excelsior. <laughs> <laughs> he, he fights these things, presumably, because like, the art is off the freaking charts. Yeah. It's just like, what am I even looking at half the time? But no complaints, because it's not like it's bad. It's just like, what? There is no book at Marvel at this point that looks like this. No, and like, what's kind of cool about this is getting, again, the right artist for the right style of story, yes. is that like, this is a story that takes place not only out of time, but between cosmic beings, and like, perhaps we humans, we're, we mere mortals couldn't yeah. quite comprehend it, and exactly. so like, that's kind of cool. Yeah, no, I like that, that it's kind of interpreted, like we're just seeing like almost like shadows. It's what we can handle. Right. It's like a star, where it's like, we don't actually see the star, we see its echo. Like, <laughs> that's right, your wishes are dead. <laughs> So he's enveloped by darkness and he's suffocating and he says, I ignite, I shine. And he uses the power cosmic to create a small star. Uh, and through his gesture of power, his hand becomes enveloped in like an ebony, you know, blackness. Later on, he will respond to, to another character in this book. He says, uh, I am injured. That's the only thing he describes. <laughs> about what that means. Is it that he released so much power? Uh, it could be that he like, but later on the, the darkness or the, the blackness on his hand, silver sort of black, uh, will continue to absorb him. And the whole, the whole book is a, a kind of a lesson about like lightness and darkness and like surrendering to the dark or like embracing the light and that kind of thing. So I'm sure it's just that like, Rad is at the end of the universe in the middle of like oblivion at the end of time. At Beginning a tiny of time. Renaissance fair. Yes, at a weird, <laughs> crazy Renaissance fair, being attacked by gestures, and he and no one, unlike his comrades from the Guardians of the Galaxy, no one is coming to save him. No one will be born to save him in a billion years. You know that kind of thing. Right. So he feels alone, and so in his, you know, in his desperation, he ignites this star, which illuminates the planet, and it hurts and recoils these aggressors okay. and then the door opens in that black gate kind of thing and a voice emanates from within it and says hello little son well met <laughs> and then pulls him in i am oz it's it's <laughs> null the god of the symbiotes creation of donny cates who says, i am null you may call me god now null the god of the symbiotes could have been totally lame but it's cates who has a modicum of self-respect and dignity and a modica, like, Cates gets a pass with Null because at least Null is interesting. Null yes, looks that like a spider. That is the Venom logo. That okay. the Venom logo is actually in deference to the god of symbiotes. See, I don't like that. That was Cates retconning that. No, I don't like that. No, because, because like that ruins the spider. Well, yeah, because it's supposed to be there because of his infatuation with Spider-Man, and then due to his rejection, it's like he takes it and corrupts yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, well, and he's also like, I'm gonna own it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's actually a, a, a like a like a cross for symbiotes. Mm. That's why he was offended. That Spider-Man had it. Yeah. You don't believe. <laughs> You know nothing of my work. <laughs> uh, Noel looks like he should have a Mephisto-style voice in the way he's depicted here. No, no, <laughs> I am Noel. <laughs> he's. I, I think. I, I think Noel's pretty dope. Also, Noel has this crazy sword, which like looks like carnage. Yeah, shouldn't exist yet because it's he a doesn't goop have sword. it. Yeah, it's the it's the uh, like Oblivion sword or the the All Black or something like that. I think it's called the All Black. So Donny Cates has a real hard on for, for swords. swords and gods. Yeah, you think? Does the sword is the sword sentient? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't speak, <laughs> but it like it is an extension of Null, and yeah. It doesn't yeah. speak, but it does uh, communicate in a series of gestures. <laughs> so Silver Surfer is now in the hands of God. Uh, uh, Null is the god of the symbiotes, and he's also the god of like all things dark, and the universe is nothing but darkness. So mm -hmm. technically, he's the god of everything. 
Or at least that's how he interprets it. Yeah. But I don't know a lot of gods that get chained up on other planets and are, uh, are, are forced to use carnage to try and wake him up. So, you know, maybe take a step back or two, no. So then Silver Surfer flashes back to a period when he was a herald for Galactus and he went to this planet called Clintar. Clintar is the word that they retcon is for symbiotes. The planet of the symbiotes, they're called Clintars. Yeah. Symbiotes are called Clintars and they've come from the planet Clintar. Uh, All right. From now on, I'm calling them Clintars. There you go. <laughs> Not symbiotes, Clintars. Clintars. Uh, so, Venom is a Clintar. That's right. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Silver Surfer goes to Clintar and he like he's checking out the planet and it's covered in this goop. And then the planet itself like kind of becomes this venom mouth and tries to eat him and pulls him into its core where he sees that Null is there. And Null is trapped by his own symbiotes in the heart of, of Clintar. And he realizes that like everything, the whole planet is symbiotes or Clintars. And they fear him. They fear Silver Surfer. He's like, why? I've never, I've never been here before. I don't know you. And the Dark God and the symbiotes themselves don't respond. Okay. And he's like, okie dokie, and he leaves, and he's like, don't go there, Galactus. So this is the end Wait, of Wait, why would not book. go eat him? D- because it's not good for you. This place is tainted. It's going to give you indigestion. Exactly. No, you got to aim him towards that shit. I know. This, well, this is just like Chinese when, food. You're just going to be hungry again afterwards. I, 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 why? That'd be, well, because it has a MSG? tapeworm. It's a tapeworm. Because it has tapeworms. A, a zillion of them. <laughs> so then we cut back to a billion years ago, which is, of course, the present for us, and he's fighting Null. <laughs> And oh, this makes sense now. The whole point is like, you know, Null is the god of darkness. Silver Surfer created a sun. That's what kind of like got Null's attention and, and, and his ire. Null has not yet been freed and then subsequently trapped on Clintar. So Null's never met Silver Surfer yet in this battle. Right. But Silver Surfer remembers like, oh, I guess I've met this guy before in a retconned period when you were on Clintar, a you know, retcon planet. This is dangerous for Silver Surfer because he probably thinks he wins. Right. So he's being reckless. He's like, nah, I trap uh, you on a planet. He's not, um, Silver Surfer is not that kind of character. He's not he's that like, brash? I'm dope. Uh, <laughs> he, he's just kind of, he just is. So. Silver Surfer is. That's right. Norin is. is. <laughs> All right, yeah, we're fine. Null senses the power cosmic within Silver Surfer and he's like, oh, I gotta get this guy. So he conjures essentially what is like the first symbiote? The first Clintar? The cl- first Clintar. And uh, pre Clintar. And infects Silver Surfer with a symbiote. So Null infects Silver Surfer with the first symbiote and turns him into essentially like a cool Silver Surfer esque venom, which he calls the Void Knight. This is his first symbiote. This is my first like kind of puppet. Sure. You are the Void Knight now and you will do my bidding. So. Were the three people outside the temple yeah. guarding it? Right. Like, yeah, to they, keep yeah, were they keeping Null him in? in or out? Yeah, he they work for him. Okay. Yeah, it would have been neat. I bet like, they, oh, were real, they were they were guarding it and keeping Null from escaping. No. They're they're they you know also what the problem is they weren't themed color wise. Yeah. They were not. So this is like they, And I they haven't quite figured out the whole hunching thing yet. I also mm-hmm. find it funny that Null's like, oh this guy. This guy gets to be my first knight, and they're all like Hey. Oh, I didn't know I could look cool. Because he does no, look... guys, you do look cool. Not like that. Look at my goofy outfit. No. I got these shoulder things. <laughs> that dude over there is wearing a mage hat. I'm way too over-designed. <laughs> so then this voice comes from beyond, and it says, Harold, this will hurt, and then blasts him with heat, which burns the symbiote off of him okay. and frees Silver Surfer. So Null says, no, you dare? And Surfer goes, always and then just blasts him with power cosmic. And the voice from outside is like, you can't defeat him, you have to run. Follow my voice. So Silver Surfer breaks through the, the gravitational pull of this like wretched planet, which of course then is revealed to be, in and of itself, like some mess of symbiotes that it goes after him. It tries to, tries to absorb him. I love this image of Silver Surfer escaping from like the center yeah, of the planet. Yeah, it's really cool. And all he can feel, the sensation that, that, that Rad feels as he, as he escapes is cold. Null is concerned that since Silver Surfer can like conjure stars and stuff, he's like, I gotta, I gotta stop this guy. Well, he's gonna ruin my plans of he's gonna wreck my nothing. Plans. Well, of, of, of ruling all the utter blackness that surrounds us. Hey, you can't create stars. Yeah, that's like literally the opposite of what I'm all about. So uh, the, the three crazy looking dudes show back up and he's like, don't, don't go after him, stay here. I'll go kill the star. 
because I have I, because I'm in the mood for a good chase. And he boards this like the winged bat wolf monster. That is awesome. I agree. <laughs> this is a mini series. I'm expecting like okay, so Noel's gonna like sit in a chair and like scheme. Yeah. No, he just hops on this big bat thing and just tears ass through space after Doran. It's cool. Okay. And he's like. Oh, screw this. And he says, I grow tired. I tire of this darkness. Okay, if that was the image that Batman saw, I would get why he'd be like, bats are the scariest thing in the world. Right, yeah, but no. I've seen bats. They're like this big, they're adorable. Especially the fruit bats. Yeah, but this one, no, terrifying. It's a Simbat oat. Simbi bat? Tiffany, take the book. We're kicking Sal off yeah, the couch. Yeah, we'll, we'll just figure this out. out. Uh, it looks like uh, he sh she shoots him with some stuff. Yeah, I'm right. Give me and, this. Uh, he like banks with the board and then look at him like he like makes space tracks with the board to stop uh -huh. and then just fires himself with the power cosmic emanating from his hand through the bat's mouth and out the back and just ignites it. Aw. Oh, screw this thing! It's evil and ba and, and badass. But no, it's cool. It's not evil. It's being ridden by a person who is evil. It's just misjudged. No, you're not giving it a chance to it's be. It's conjured it by evil. Be. So Rad jumps on his board and uh, he 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 survives. But oh my god, look this, at no! Yeah, hey, he can make. Well, he's a big scary monster. So Silver Surfer survives his assault on this giant horrible bat monster, and the voice is like, "Hey, are you okay?" And he's like, "I survive." But he's changed. The, the black hand has now absorbed up to his shoulder blade. Oh, he's got like a sleeve. Yeah, he's got a sleeve, a sweet <laughs> sleeve of blackness. And uh, so he boards the board, and he's just like, follow the voice. <laughs> and just lets the board carry him away. Yeah, he's and, a little shaky. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. Well, that took a lot out of him. He had to kill this, like, nutso thing. Uh, so he then meets up with the being that is speaking to him. Because when when that when when Null first like chased after him, when the whole planet kind of like went for him, he's like, mm -hmm. it's kind of ironic that like I served a planet devourer and I will now be devoured by a planet. <laughs> and he says, and now you'll be saved by one. And so Silver Surfer comes into contact with Ego, the living planet. Oh, oh, baby Ego. Yeah, young Ego, I guess. I don't know. He's yeah. in his prime. <laughs> right. And so Ego says, "Shall we kill a god today?" I'm feeling a little loose and yeah, fancy. Let's do this. Silver Surfer has a dream in which he awakens next to his beloved Shalabal. Yay, Shalabal! On the planet of Zenla. And the two of them talk about whether they should have children in this like dark and horrible universe that has like no future. And then... We were talking about, look at this awesome place they live in. Well, yeah, Zenla is dope, but like if you leave, it sucks. I mean, there's Earth and Don't like the Skrulls and stuff. Yeah, oh no, he has no intention. But then uh, there's an explosion. Of course, it's the last day of Zenla and Galactus has come. Uh, but... It's not Galactus this time. Instead, it's Silver Surfer, and he's enveloped in all black. And Rad is now faced against himself. The, and this is the day that death came to Zen Law. So the Silver Surfer just like lets loose his darkness into the planet, and then just symbiote shit just shoots out of him, and it plugs into Zen Law and just destroys it. Uh, Norin Rad, the the, the Zen Lawian. It's like, please spare my planet. I will join you. He tries the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, he does his, his yeah, shtick. Yeah, but this thing, this Silver Surfer, the Void Knight or the the, the Black King or whatever the hell you want to call him, the Black uh, Hand. Yeah, he's like, nope, and just blows up Zen Law. And when Silver Surfer awakens, he's outside of uh, Ego, the Living Planet, and Ego is like, hey man, you've been asleep for days. It's time to wake up. And he's like, I'm sorry, I've just been. Wrecked. I've been through a couple of things. I've been I've been having a hard time. May I land on you? And Ego says you may. And it's just kind of this cute little like back and forth. Right. You know, like, you know so because Ego is a planet, you think yeah. I mean, you won't notice, but like it's nice to ask permission, especially if your planet <laughs> is sentient. Can I land on you? Only All if right. I can land on you. I mean, <laughs> technically, aren't we doing that exact same thing in space? If I land on you, you're landing on me. Cause no. We're... <laughs> 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 ah! All right, you've landed on me. Can I land on you now? Yeah. Silver Surfer lands on Ego, and he notices that Ego is fettered. He's in, he's in pain. Oh. And he says, what's going on? He says, like, there's there's something in me that is hurting me. And is this like the old, like, Aesop's fable of the mouse and the lion? Kind of, except Ego was always nice. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, he says, there's something embedded, a meteorite of some kind, in my core, and it is growing and killing me. Is it a tumor? It's not a tumor. Surfer offers to help him, and he goes, you... You won't survive my planet core. 
The planet, planet gold. gold. God damn it. Does he get into a bongo? He does not. He is the bongo. So Silver Server's <laughs> like, you're both bongo. <laughs> <laughs> so Silver Server's like, I found your wound. I will go in and help you. And Ego says, you've never faced anything like me before. And he goes, I faced far worse Ego. And then he turns the board into a super awesome drill. And then he fires the board into Ego's molten core and then follows along behind it. Now, how Is could, it safe? How could he know how to just drill into something? If they couldn't teach astronauts how to drill into an a asteroid. Are you talking about Armageddon? <laughs> I'll tell you what Michael Bay told Ben Affleck when he raised that same question. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we see uh, we see Silver Surfer like drill into him. Yeah. And then it's really cool looking. Yeah, and emerge inside the core. Ugh. Ego is like the best gobstopper ever. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those flavors. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I like this like chocolatey, crunchy part. Mm. Mm. And this is probably like a like a hard toffee. Yeah, yeah definitely. Right on. Mm. Uh, is Galactus like a big threat to Ego? Yeah. Okay. Ego just like constantly like, no. Yeah, well, Ego can move. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, okay, he would be, except like Norm, like, I think because Ego and Galactus are like elders in the universe and they're both like, like these like cosmic forces, there's like a like a ceasefire or like a. Like right, a, but like, let's just say Galactus did what Galactus did and just devoured the universe. Inevitably, it would just be Ego and Galactus yes. left. Yes, and well, then, then. And Galactus would hunger. Yes, it would come to a head. Yeah. Absolutely. And then Ego would be like, no. no. It would be like an endless chase across yeah. the galaxy. I think so. No, no, what you do is, just like the hunt for Red October, you always stay in its wake. Wherever Galactus is and wherever he's going, you just follow behind him yeah. and hope he doesn't turn around. He's like, what was that? <laughs> he turns, you're just like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Silver Server comes in contact with this like meteorite that landed within, or that embedded itself in Ego, and he transforms the board into a sword, which he then uses to slay like the antibodies that are coming for him to kill him because he's, in a, he's a foreign element. Right. And, uh, and then ultimately, when he makes his way through through them and into the meteorite that landed within him, he discovers that it is actually Lifebringer One, the ship that Galen flew when he survived the destruction of his universe and would become Galactus. That's cool. That, that is cool. That Galactus was birthed within the heart of Ego, the living planet. Which is why he wants to eat planets. Maybe that like some part of Ego imprinted on him. So Silver Server's like, oh shit. I am gonna take this out of you, and then I'm gonna throw it in the sun. Screw this guy, because without him, I won't have destroyed countless civilizations, he won't eat planets, and I won't feel the endless guilt that I have. Yeah. Well, you also don't have to be you. Yeah. If Galactus doesn't exist, then your planet will be saved, and you can be with your Zen La person. Shalaba. Yeah. Shalaba. Shalaba. But like, <laughs> close enough. Yeah. Um, oh, so Silver Surfer takes right, Lifebringer One Right, but this Silver out. Surfer won't be affected if that It will not. Like, it would be- Ego says that to him. He says- Yeah. <laughs> He's saying actually a different e version of himself. That's not how time works. It's not how time works. It's not how Marvel time works. It's not how this time works. Forget <laughs> it. Ethan, I didn't know you were here. <laughs> <laughs> so Silver Surfer takes Lifebringer One out of Ego. He's like, I've done it. And uh, the both of them feel that Null is still in pursuit. Okay. And Ego says, I owe you a debt, I'll help you. And he goes, I can't ask you to do that. Like, he'll kill you too. Trust me, you don't want to deal with this guy. He's weird. Yeah, he sucks. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So he says, anyway, thank you for shelter, I I'm gonna go. So he turns the board into chains, <laughs> grabs Life Bringer One, he's just gonna drag it to a sun. Yeah. And he goes like, hey, where are you going with that? He's like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dump it. <laughs> I'm gonna kill Galactus. I'll take it to Helios Ra, which is the white dwarf star of the Apollo system. And he's like, here we go. So Silver Surfer's about to push it in, but he feels this like pang of regret and reluctance. And it's a good thing he does because then Uatu shows up and he says, hey man, come here. Ah! Uatu's like, okay, so good thing uh, I, I got here. I was a little late. I'm glad you had that, that moment. Yes, for yourself, uh, because that really bought me a minute. And uh, so here's the deal. You were about to do some weird, crazy shit. I'm Uatu, the worst watcher. I'm getting involved. Or the literally best right now. watcher. Yeah, well for us he's the best, <laughs> constantly. But he's like, hey, you can't kill Galactus. He's part of this. And if you kill him, you won't get fixed with the time wake. It'll just be you living with your guilt 
having killed Galactus and changing the universe into something else. You don't know where the universe will go. And I've seen, I'm the Watcher, I've seen multiple civilizations and multiple realities. No. Get this. Because <laughs> he's seen it. He's seen like, I've seen you live with Shalabal and have children and grow old and die on Zen La. I've seen you become this like black thing that you're becoming and kill everybody. I've seen you lift Mjolnir and fight with Thor against Gore. I've seen you do all kinds of crazy crap, and I've seen what you're about to do here, and if you do it, you you will unleash something else. Something else, something worse will happen, and you'll have to live with the freaking guilt. He's like, I'll take my chances. Yeah, he doesn't. Whew. Silver Surfer's <laughs> cool, and he's like, okay. Nothing but net. <laughs> so he goes, all right, well, I, I, I'm kind of in a, in a really tough position. Like, I want to kill Galactus, but also, like, I know that Null's on his way, and I can't beat him by myself. I barely managed to escape without the help of Ego the Living Planet, and, like, Maybe I could take the power cosmic from within Lifebringer 1 that's going to make Galen into Galactus. I could heal myself and be at full strength, but that would still kill Galactus. And he's like, yeah, you could do that. I don't want you to. What do you want to want to? Because you're giving me nothing. That's, that's my job. <laughs> then why are you here? To see what's going on. But and you're also, interfering a lot. Yeah, well, just don't do it. So uh, Silver Surfer interfaces with Lifebringer 1 and kind of like sends a portion of his essence inside to meet with Galen. There he is. This is the face of Galactus. No helmet, pre-transformation. Oh, hey, I didn't see you come in. Yeah, what's up? It's and really like, hot. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, so what are you doing here, man? He doesn't know him. He, know, he will not know him yet. And he's like, so what's going on? And Silver Surfer's like, I'm here to kill you. And he's like, why? And he's like, because you will become death. And he's like, okay. That right. sounds rad. All right, well, no. He goes, well, all right, well, you're a hypocrite. You're going to kill me to stop killing? It just seems kind of hypocritical, don't you think? I mean, like, I know that this power within me and around me, this power cosmic that I need to take to become Galactus, I know that you could use it and do whatever selfish thing you're off to do. But if I take it, I'll actually become part of the universe and do what I'm meant to be. You know? And he's like... Mm -hmm. He's really sure of himself. Like, but, I am meant to be this. Well, he, he feels it. That, to me, sounds like he's like, all right, I got nothing. This is, if this doesn't work... I'm going down. Well, and, the, the, well, and, and Galen actually gives Silver Surfer a nickel's worth of free advice where he says something like, like, if I'm death, killing me won't stop me. Like, you can't defeat darkness with more darkness. Mm. And he's like, fair enough. And Silver Surfer kind of realizes, like, I'm not you. I'm not Galactus. I'm not a killer. I mean, I, I was when I worked for you, but, like, not anymore. And also, I wasn't going to kill you with darkness. I was going to throw you in a sun. That's just pure light. Right. So he pulls Lifebringer 1 and, with it, Galen away from the sun. And as he starts to pull it and throw Galen and Lifebringer 1 away, back to where he needs to be to become Galactus, because, like, he needs to be in a portion of space, and he's like, I'm guessing it's over there. Whirring! And he just throws him that way. Uh, the, the blackness within Silver Surfer starts to crackle away and take over more of him. Oh. Because of the darkness he felt in his soul. So he goes back to Ego, and he goes like, oh, you're what, what's up? How did, how, did, how did all the killing go? He's like, ah, I didn't go with that. <laughs> you didn't go with that. Are you said this guy was going to eat planets. He goes, listen, it's gone. I Don't worry about it. Are uh, Ego's eyes like tiny moons around him? Yeah. That's really cool. According to Tradmore. I mean, like... Yeah, that's a really cool interpretation of that, though. Like, they're just, like, stuck within his gravitational pull. The darkness within me is nipping at my throat. I can't explain to you what I need. Read my mind so I can save time and page real estate. So he's like, okie dokie. And he <laughs> goes, right on. Uh, so... Let's totally, like, meld, man. Yeah, and with the melding of Ego and Silver Surfer, Ego also reaches out to, like, all life in the universe. He connects him to everything. And then he infuses that power into Silver Surfer to face against Null. Because, like, if Null wins now, at this point in the billions of, the, like, billions of years in the past, he'll take over everything and nothing will have mm. emerged. Like, the only thing that will exist is Galactus. Maybe Ego and Null, and right. that sucks. So Surfer takes in this, this, this light, this, you know, collective light of the universe and all of its, you know, glory and splendor. And he says, I will not curse the darkness. Uh, I will burn it. Oh, it looks like he has another dragon. You think I won? That's what he's all about. I got like 12 dragons. I have a flight of dragons. Mm -hmm. As Surfer absorbs this light and becomes what he is, we get this like, 
crazy. Oh, it's it. like cubism. Yeah. It's like cubism and like surrealism. Yeah, well, because he's his his corporeal shell is being unmade and he is being rebuilt. That's cool. This is why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> and slowly he is being remade, and in doing so he remembers everything that's happened. He's cap he's catching back up with himself. And he's like, right on, okay, that's pretty messed up. We're catching up the reader as well in this insane number of pages. And then remembers that he's facing against Null, and then Null shows up. And he's oh, like, right, there's up? a dragon right in front of me. Oh, yeah, right, okay, well, let's do this. Null's like, all right, all right, all right. I go to the, dr the bat dragon. Mm -hmm. This is a dragon dragon. Yeah, this is just a real dragon, <laughs> I guess. He takes the light from the universe, and he puts it over, like, he like, infuses it into his heart. Oh, that's smart. So, like, smart. that's the bit of light that's left. But as he fights, and the harder he fights against Null, and he, it's a pretty epic, crazy-ass battle, but, like, we see that the darkness starts to take over every part of him. And then he summons the board and then turns the board into a blade to fight against the, the blade of Null. Uh -huh. And uh, the two of them clash. And, of course, like, as, it's, as the clashing, Surfer's getting more and more absorbed. Have we described what this thing is that is absorbing him? No. It's the darkness. They haven't said. You have to attack it. <laughs> well, With good magic thing he missile. has magic missile. <laughs> Null does get the upper hand. And basically... Oh, is he above him? Does he have the high ground? <laughs> no. <laughs> they, well, they, they, they... Oh, sure, you make a high ground joke. Oh, we're having a good time. We make a bongo joke. And it's like, get yeah. out of here. Yeah, both those are prequel references. Mm. They battle and they're like, on the surface of this kind of like... This nothing planet, there's like nothing here. It's not, okay. it's not ego, it's just something It's else. just somewhere else. Yeah, we, they've, you know, in their, in their travels throughout space, they land on this planet. And they're fighting and they're like swinging swords. And then uh, Null plunges his sword into, in, into Silver Surfer and then drives the both of them through the planet into like the, under the surface. And then he takes the, and the, and the, the blades like symbiote garbage, like envelops Silver Surfer and like pins him there. And he says, stop struggling, that's enough, I'm done. It's over. Like, your light's mine, I'm taking it. He goes, okay. Please do. What? And then he expels the light from his heart, and Null tries to extinguish it, and Surfer winds up, like, kind of expanding it with his power cosmic, mm -hmm. which, you know, is, like, the antithesis of what Null is. It drives Null away, because he realizes, like, I can't kill Null. Null is, like, darkness. And that exists everywhere, and it is everything. But I, through the light of the universe that I've that I've absorbed and and, and my experiences, I've I've birthed an infant son, which will drive Null away. And so he 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 does. And the son like basically just freaks Null out, and he leaves. It just blasts him out of here. Mm. And he's like, Null is gone, but not forever, but for long enough. Like for as long as I've been missing. <laughs> While. Silver Surfer is enveloped in this darkness and facing against Null. He says, I hear a voice that is strong and sure in my mind that I thought had gone that said, if we turn from battle because there is little hope of victory, then where would Valor be? It's a, it's a line that actually is what Stan Lee wrote. Oh, in that's nice. the Mobius Silver Surfer book. Okay. But, uh, but it's such a good line. I, I, I love the Cates. It's like, I'm just going to put that in there. Uh, but so Null is driven away. This infant son is born. Silver Surfer lands on this like random nothing planet, and he reaches where the where, where the light had been, and from it he finds these seeds. These sunflower seeds, if you will, uh, but they're they're, they're life they're, they're, they're life bringer seeds. Damn it! And when he when he has the seeds, he realizes what he is and what he's doing here, and so he takes the seeds and he plants them in the surface and he holds it down as he's complete. He's now completely like enveloped in, in, in black. Right. Yeah, because the seeds were in his heart. <laughs> yeah. And he uses the inner light from within him, the, the the last light that's left within the Silver Surfer, and he infuses the seeds with this life, and it grows and blossoms into a flower, which he names Zen La. Ah. And then the flower grows and becomes Zen La. The Silver Surfer creates his own homeworld. That's cool. And he realizes that like he has work to do, and he goes... Throughout, he, he basically kind of like becomes energy itself and goes out into the known universe. And in the beginning of the story, there's a flashback of him as the Silver Surfer taking Galactus to all these different worlds, with all these different civilizations, including a dog world. All of them fall Well, under, it's an adorable planet. It's true. All of these planets fall under Galactus' hunger. But the actions that Silver Surfer takes now here with the seeds, he winds up 
creating all those planets that he will inevitably later send Galactus to. So he creates the life that he then extinguishes. Yeah. So does that relieve his guilt? It's... I mean, like, it wouldn't alleviate mine, but I think it's meant to in this story. But, so, you know, it's kind of, like, cyclical and beautiful. That's yeah, the like idea. it never would have existed without him. Right, exactly. Chad really likes this shot. Yeah, Is we see it three third, times. Yeah, it's like the third time we've mm-hmm. seen this shot. Yeah. Well, yeah, because, like, what's up there, man? <laughs> he's, like a, he's like a Ken doll. He's bigger than us. He's walking over us. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so he, so he seeds the universe with life. Not the whole universe, not with all life, he doesn't create humanity or whatever, but he does create these different civilizations and, and knows that this light that he's kind of given will spread throughout the universe. And over millennia, he then becomes reconstituted and catches back up with himself through the wormhole and catches up with Stormbreaker attached to the Crimson Chains of Ciderac, blasting out of the wormhole. So Silver Silver catches up with the Guardians from the beginning of the book. Oh, so it's like he never left to yes, them. Yes, exactly. Oh. But he but has now changed. He's, yeah, now he's this. Now like, he's, whoa! Does that yeah. mean... Wait. Do they explain this darkness ever? They haven't yet. Right, because he shows up in Thor, and he's like this. Yeah. And like Thor's like, well, dude? Do you mean King Thor? No, I mean okay. Kate's is Thor. Yes. Like, in the first issue, he shows up, and like Thor's like... Uh, you look a little different. He's like, no time. Yes. Yeah. The, er, <laughs> and if you are reading all of Kate's books, Guardians of the Galaxy, That's right. That's Thor, why I wrote, okay. This is why everybody thinks that it's Null that's yeah. coming. Yes. All right. Yeah. Well, well I mean, Null is coming because of the carnage. Because of absolute thing, carnage. But, like, it, with Thor, there's something else that's coming that's, yes. like... And like, Kate's has said that's not Null. Well, it shouldn't be because it wouldn't make any sense that it would be. Exactly. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we also get this image at the end that highlights the line that he took of, if we turn from battle because there's a little hope of victory, where would valor be? Let it ever be the goal that stirs us, not the odds. Aw. Ugh. Good stuff. Nice. So, Silver Surfer ends up creating those planets. Yes, but as Uatu points out earlier, it doesn't affect him. You know, it won't, like, undo Silver Surfer's existence. So he can be in multiple places in either time. Is the lesson that he learns that he's just, like, much like Galactus had a role to play, as do I, apparently. Yes. Like, this is what I was always meant to do. Well, and also I think he learns because he's, like, he's constantly battling the darkness with, like, violence and with, like, despair. And what I think he realizes is that, like, you can't... It's the, it's the lesson that proto-Galactus Galen teaches him which is you can't fight or kill darkness with more darkness Mm. Uh, but he does kind of expel the last of the light within him so this silver surfer it's our silver surfer but through this experience he's changed he's dark he's he's silver surfer black and the question is whether like that means that he's like that that, that he does that he has no more hope or light left within him Mm. and I don't know like and I'm looking forward to finding out because this kind of Silver Surfer books. Does he still are have great. the power cosmic then? Yeah. So he's got the power cosmic. Sure. But he has no more light. Right. Whatever and, that means. And that's a more of an abstract. And in the Thor book, it is Thor's book, but like Galactus chooses Thor yeah. in place of Silver Surfer. Yeah. Yeah. Well yeah. Mm. Silver Surfer spent. Well, maybe. Or maybe Galactus is like, oh, like I remember when you became this. When right. I first met you. Wouldn't he remember that then when he... Maybe that's why he takes the deal. Maybe that's why he takes Rad in the first place. Wait, like, like it wouldn't make any sense necessarily. He's like, what do I really need a herald? He's like, you know what? Wait. I know where this is going. Yep. All right, let's do this. Yep. Which works. That's that's the good kind of retconning. Where you're like, okay, right on. Because, like, the story itself, it's self-serving. Nell's in it. uh, But at the same time, it's still... He still manages to tell this, like, really beautiful narrative. Yeah. That, like, I really glossed over the the, the writing of this, but really... Really sink your teeth into it. I'm going to put a link in the description below this video for you to get a copy of this. Hopefully yeah, it'll be this one. Get the oversize because this is this is dope. Yeah, I read it digitally when I first picked it up. I read the first issue with you. Yeah. And then I completely fell off the book. And I'm, I, I didn't. I, I was like, wish I, gotta... I hadn't, but I'm glad I did because getting to see it like this. It works in big format. This is a book for cool pictures. Yes. Oh, yeah, no. Moore was born to draw this stuff, which, of course, is in and of itself inspired by the work of artists like Kirby and Mobius but I'll say this good stuff for me there's no payoff yet because this changes 
Silver Surfer in a way. Yeah, but sets that up we for don't more. know. Yeah, yeah, and we don't know because I heard somebody talk about how like maybe what he has is a symbiote, but I don't like that. No, I don't like that at all, and I don't think it is. Well, I'm okay with this kind of like as it is. I mean, like I naturally I'd like to see, and he's being used in other books, but like yes. there is something about this style of art and the style of storytelling like, where it's it like here. it's not meant to have an ending necessarily. That's how I felt. It's supposed to be like this like philosophical conversation that you're meant to have about like w like what was his purpose? Is this meant to be what was supposed to happen? Does this always happen for him? What right. does he learn from this? Yeah, and that like. As much as it is like a physical manifestation of something, what what is it possibly the allegory of this right. blackness? And I'm exactly. like, that's kind of cool. Like just leaving it open ended. They're gonna answer it. They will. <laughs> I certainly hope so. Because yeah. they're like, like, well, what's the answer? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But what I do you think? Question. <laughs> but I kind of like that. Yeah, I also like that. I, I I was very happy and satisfied at the end of it when I read it. I was like, I don't need more. But, Kate's, but we do need we do need more. We need trad more. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't need a continuation of this. Uh, because Cates has a hard-on for his own continuity, there's no way that we won't get more of that. Yeah. Uh, I'm hopeful that this isn't the last we see of Tradmore doing Silver Surfer work. Um, it would be very nice to see, like, maybe a sequel to this, like, uh, down the road. Did this come out after Stan passed? Oh, yeah. No, this came out, like, six months ago. Okay. I think that has an impact. Very much so. At the end of the story, we have a like letter that Cates wrote about how uh, he met Stanley once at a convention when he was like just a young pup, and he like, you know, word vomited all <laughs> over him. But one of the things he said was, "It's it's classic Stan." He says, "I told him that I could never thank him enough for all he's done," and <laughs> Stan says, well, "You can try." <laughs> <laughs> And Kate's is like, well, so here's my book. That is my thank you. Aw. This is really cool. Like, even just these, like, like the, the interior. Yeah. The like interior page. covers. Yeah. Like, not only just the design of them, but, like, he's, like, you know, we're, like, heading into this adventure, and then mm -hmm. there's, like, this moment of, like, introspection. And reflection. Yeah, at is. the end. Like, that's really cool. They also carry over this image of Silver Surfer on the spine of this, own, of this book. Oh. It's like, phew. That's cool. <laughs> this is cool. I wish I hadn't stopped reading it. Yeah, well, you this can is read this it is cool to read it this like this. This is better to read it like that. It is. Yeah. If you like this episode and you want to see more Silver Surfer, I promise you, I have more Silver Surfer. I would love to do Silver Surfer Requiem. It's a very different art oh, style yeah. this, than I've ever seen. This is something else. This is on another level. Although Straczynski's Silver Surfer Requiem is excellent, and it's very different but similar. Like Silver Surfer is the same, but this Silver Surfer in Requiem like is on Earth. You He's leaving forever. You so. didn't point out that in his dream, like, the onomatopoeia is worked <laughs> into the art? Yes. This is in the description. Buy it. Don't get the digital. Get this. I promise you will be rewarded. And it's less than cover price. So check it out, and we'll see you guys next time with all new episode of Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. Thanks a lot for watching. This answers the old age-old question, is Norrin rad? I say yes. Especially in these colors. Yeah, totally. no, he's totally rad. <laughs>